Hello there folks. This video today is going to show you how to do a little ladder logic programming within the new Crimson Control environment. So uh, this is uh, something new from Redline, uh, in which case uh, you either have to have a Crimson Control module on the back of your Graphite HMI, or you might be using one of the new Edge controllers, which is a nice product, has the Crimson Control feature built on in. So once you have that module, and you're running a newer build of Crimson 3, uh, if you've added that to your rack, uh, or not rack, but your modules on the back, in the lower left-hand corner here of Crimson 3, uh, you'll see there's a section called Control, which uh, won't show up if you're using a G3 HMI, or if you're using one of the Cadet versions, it's not available on there. But on the Graphites, or the uh, Edge controllers, you have this. So if I click on the Control Slice here, uh, this image right here is the ladder diagram. I've already did a YouTube video on how to do a function block one. This one is the ladder diagram version. So if you watch here, I click out the window, you can see that I get different boxes and so forth. Let's just pretend that I want to take a discrete input and when it goes on, I want to turn a discrete output on. Just a very simple ladder logic, contact. If this is on, turns on and out. But so when I click right here, you can see up here in the header bar how the icons change and so forth. And I'm just going to click here, insert contact before. Watch what happens here, team. Boom. I get a rung completely there of a contact here and then a coil output. And it's asking me right now to declare some variables. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to type input underscore one for my input guy, I'm going to hit enter or you can actually hit, click the OK button here, normally I just hit enter, but input one, watch what it does, it says hey, it does not, uh, it does this symbol does not currently exist, I'm going to declare a variable, it's going to be a boolean type, if I hit the pull down here, notice you've got all these different types you can do, we're going to stick with our boolean because it's a discrete flag tag or discrete, the global, uh, much like other ladder logic programs, you can make it a retentative tag, global, or a tag that, reti that retains ah, bad word, that uh, exists only in the global or in the uh, program. But we're going to make it a global. Click yes. There it is. Then I need to declare this as an output. So I'll double click on it and type the word output underscore one. Click the OK button here. Once again, boolean, boo global say yes you can see over here they show up now all right well these variables right here only exist within the Prince control program they're not currently available in your ladder in your HMI program if you look over here this is where you're normally used to uh, using tags within crimson 3.0 as you can see right now there's no tags in here at all if I wanted to put these on the display page here there's no way to do it because they don't show up over on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the left-hand side in the Crimson Control area. And I'm going to click on my input one. And I want to basically make, I want to connect this tag to a tag that would reside in my HMI environment. So right here where it says source, hit the pull down. And I'm going to declare this as a new tag. Watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to click on new tag. It's going to say, hey, I could not identify this out in the HMI environment. Do you want to declare a new tag? And I want you to notice, folks, that there's a uh, identifier project dot input one. Uh, I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and flag tags, correct? Click OK. Boom. So now what it's done, if I go over here to the lower right hand corner. Look, I now have a category uh, called project here and then in there I have input one. Let me go ahead and add this output one on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the new pull down, create new tag. Once again, say yes. And probably over here now it should show up. Look, it sure did. Okay. So now if I want to see this on my screen, let me go well, actually I got one more thing to do. I have two more things to do really. In ladder logic, just like anybody else's ladder logic program, you have to compile uh, check for errors. This button here, check it. 
for any syntax errors, no. And then this button here will build the database. And you can see it built correctly. The last part though is in order to get this code to execute, I'm gonna over on the left hand side, click on the word project right here. And I already, normally it's set up do not ex execute, but I've got it set up as execute periodically. And that means that it's gonna call that program every 100 milliseconds to run. Folks, the fastest that our logic can run is a 100 millisecond scan time. So keep that in mind when you're doing applications. We are a 100 millisecond scan time here. So that's got that set up there. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to display pages on the left. And I wanna try this out, team. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my input tag and drag it out here like this. And I'll drag my output tag over here, for instance, like this. Let me zoom in so you can see a little better. So I'll put my output over there. I'm going to make this field be data entry, so you can see that there. Or I'll go over here to primitives, home direct my primitives, and I'll come down to my uh, two state uh, two state toggles. And I might grab this one right here, just so you can graphically see this a little bit differently. I'll make this guy a little bigger. I'm going to link this graphic to my input one by doing this simple test or simple feature. Double click, and this off, so it goes in two. And I want to make this guy control my input one. So I'm going to go over to the right side, go to data tags on the right side, and I'm going to grab input one and drag that tag right here in the value field. Boom. Now I should be able to control that with this here. And then on this side, what I'd like to do is put an indicator over here. So I'll go to the indicators category, my primitives, and uh, I'm gonna grab this labeled LED, but watch this folks. If I click one time on this labeled LED, you have all these different colored versions. I'm gonna grab the red off like so, and I'll make this guy a little bigger. But let me double click on this. I wanna show you something. When I double click on it, I'm okay with the red off, but I think this image here should be on. Let me make this. So I want this one to be green here instead of red. I want this to be green. I think I said that. I want this one to be green here. So what I'll do, if you notice in Crimson 3, it automatically navigates to Symbol Factory here. And I believe, team, if I go to the Gadget Lights 2 directory, Gadget Lights 2 directory. And in here I have all kinds of different versions. If I slide down just a little bit further, there happens to be a green on one right here. So to change out the pictures, you just grab that picture and drag and drop it right here on the on symbol. That now will be the on picture. And then what I'm gonna do is I need to link this to my output. So I'll go to data tags on the right, grab the output tag and drag and drop it right here in the status field. Once I drop it there in the status field, I'll click the OK button. So I think this looks good, team. I'm going to go ahead and download this to my screen, see if it's actually working. The system will shut down because I'm downloading. I'll say yes. I've got a web server working because I'm using the new Edge controller here. And if you look here, uh, here's my logic. If I turn it on, boom, and you can see instantly the output goes on whenever this goes on. And that's a pretty simple way to do a uh, Crimson control for just a ladder diagram. And if I go back over here to my control and program, here's the program. Another thing I might show you before I shut this off. You want to test this? This is kind of neat, folks. You want to test this without going live. You can hit this button right here, which will run the editor, cold start here. And now what I can do is I can double click on my input and make it to be true. And notice the run shows up as true now or I can double click on this, make it be false, and it goes off. So you can use these buttons here to test your logic or to step through your code. Anyway, that is just a quick video team of how you can use Crimson Control to do a ladder diagram here in Crimson 3.0. Hey, thanks a lot, folks. You have a great day now.